The CEO of Stellantis just told the public he is very confident that they'll catch Tesla within a couple of years. This CEO is lying to you. There is no way they'll actually catch Tesla in the next two years. They don't even have a single all electric vehicle for sale in the US. Stellantis is the conglomerate corporation that just merged a year ago and it's made up of Chrysler and Alfa Romeo and Jeep and Dodge and a bunch of other car companies, making them the fourth largest automaker in the world. That being said, their vehicle sales numbers have been on the decline since 2019. And we should note that declining sales isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it for sure can be. They're obviously a massive company, but one thing they haven't yet proved is that they can make EVs profitably. In 2020, they sold around 140,000 EVs globally. Then in 2021, they more than doubled that sales number, hitting around 390,000. That is a really impressive feat to be sure, but hitting that number came with some major downsides, which we're gonna talk about in a sec. Also, it's important to know that those numbers are including plug-in hybrids, meaning vehicles that have an entire gas engine, but also can run fully on battery power, typically for less than 40 miles. Anyways, in 2021, Stellantis sold less than half of the EVs Tesla sold around 390,000 to around 930,000 that Tesla sold, yet the CEO of Stellantis just recently said this, I am very confident, I'm trying not to be arrogant, just confident of the fact that we're going to catch up in the next couple of years with Tesla, and it's going to be a very healthy competition. It seems like all the legacy auto CEOs got together and they decided they needed to say that they're confident they're gonna beat Tesla in the next few years. GM did it, Ford did it, Volkswagen did it, and now Stellantis. That's what the cool kids are doing these days, I guess. It's like they've finally realized just how much trouble they're in and they have to try and convince the public that they're not getting absolutely wrecked in regards to EVs, despite what it looks like. Because what it looks like is that Legacy Auto got caught completely disregarding what their customers wanted and needed because they didn't want to make EVs. And since they all collectively agreed that they didn't want to try and make EVs, their monopoly was safe. But then Tesla came in and ruined everything. But anyways, to address Tavares' statement, I'll say this. He might be very confident that they'll catch Tesla within the next couple years, but I am also very confident that Stellantis will not catch Tesla in the next couple years. And there are a bunch of reasons why I think this, but we need to start with addressing CEO Tavares' comments just a few months ago when he said that the transition to EVs was, quote, beyond the limits for automakers. He said that, what has been decided is to impose on the automotive industry electrification that brings 50% additional costs against a conventional vehicle. There is no way we can transfer 50% of additional costs to the final consumer because most parts of the middle class will not be able to pay. And he is totally right. There is absolutely no way they can pass that increase of cost to the consumer but they need to innovate. It's like on one hand he's saying they'll beat the global leader in EVs in just a couple years, while on the other hand saying there's no way they can transition to EVs because they're way too expensive. Like which one is it actually? And keep in mind, he's making these statements at the end of 2021, which is the year they increased their EV efforts dramatically. So then you kind of need to decide for yourself whether you think he's being honest with those statements or if you think he's trying to convince the public or the competition not to transition to EVs quickly. That would make some sense strategically if they're going all in on EVs because they see it as the future. It could still be in their best interest to convince their competition to not take EVs as seriously so it would slow their adoption rate. Also, his goal might be to try and convince governments around the globe that EVs aren't ready for the main stage and in that way secure more subsidies for their company's transition. There are a whole bunch of different factors for what could be motivating his statements, so it's hard to say exactly what his reasoning is. But there's one thing we can say. If they really are experiencing 50% higher costs, like he's saying, that would make it damn near impossible for them to catch Tesla in the next couple years. Their costs would simply be too high. But even if we just break down their goals as a company, they aren't even trying to compete with Tesla. Their goal is to have 5 million EV sales globally by 2030. If we take a look at Tesla's predicted sales by 2030, we start to see why Stellantis is screwed. By 2030, Tesla is predicted to have 20 million in EV sales, or four times what Stellantis is aiming for. Now, obviously there's going to have to be some pretty massive changes to Tesla in order to achieve that goal. But one thing they've clearly proved is that they can innovate and grow at an unprecedented rate. 
In 2021, they got close to a million in sales. And in 2022, they're opening both their Giga Texas and Giga Berlin factories, which will give them dramatically more production capacity and allow them to enter the European market with lower costs because they'll be producing in Europe instead of shipping cars from their Shanghai factory. In 2024, Tesla is predicted to have anywhere from 2 million to 4 million in vehicle sales. And given Stellantis' current position, it seems nearly impossible for them to surpass that. For example, just a couple days ago, Stellantis announced that they're working with LG to build a battery plant in Ontario, which will be critical to their EV production goals. But that factory isn't going to start production until 2024 at the earliest. And by starting production, I mean they won't start making batteries. It's one of those situations where it takes months or years to see the results of these massive early investments. And I think while Stellantis is clearly making those investments currently, I don't think they'll be able to ramp up to catch Tesla in the next couple years. Now, of course, I'm not saying this can't happen. Anything can happen, and I'm wrong all the time, but I do think it's incredibly unlikely for it to happen. My personal opinion is that Tavares is trying to put forward a bold face to the public so that they can be seen as a true Tesla competitor when in all likelihood, that really isn't the case. Stellantis may want to dramatically ramp up their EV production, but just a few months ago, Tavares was saying that pushing to speed that process up is just going to be counterproductive. It will lead to quality problems. It will lead to all sorts of problems. So we're getting a real change of tune after just a few months, which is kind of sus. Whenever you have the CEO changing their tune that quickly, you should be suspicious because they were either lying to you then or they're lying to you now. Also, if he thinks they can catch Tesla within the next couple years, that would in theory be before they release a single vehicle in the US market. And while the US EV market isn't the largest by any stretch of the imagination, it is a very lucrative one because of the demand for luxury vehicles. And that's important with EVs because they are generally more expensive than ICE vehicles currently. So Stellantis needs those luxury buying consumers. If vehicles are going to be more expensive and therefore have a higher MSRP, then for a company to not even attempt to sell into a market where consumers traditionally spend more per vehicle seems like a really bad idea. It's a major missed opportunity for Stellantis to leave out the US. But then again, I'm an American, so I could just be showing off my bias here. So then I have to ask an honest question. Do you think Tavares is being genuine when he says he's very confident they'll catch Tesla within the next couple of years? Or do you think he's playing some sort of a game with the public with that statement? As always, huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. They're the reason I can keep making videos like this. Without them, I wouldn't be able to do it. If you liked this video, give me a like and subscribe. If you loved the video, think about tossing some financial support my way on Patreon. But only if you have the spare income. If you need the money, please keep it for yourself. Also, if you find an article that's pushing an agenda or spreading misinformation or whatever it is, send it my way. My info is down below like always. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. See you on the next one. Peace.